Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike, and today we're gonna talk about something that you, you need to think about before you just take a high intensity interval training class. So I've talked about it before, especially in my previous video, we, we talked about the difference between high intensity interval training and long distance running and how they're both really effective for making you fitter and losing weight and all sorts of good stuff. Now, I wouldn't recommend high intensity interval training for everybody. Specifically, if you have chronic injuries that are set off by technique changes, high intensity interval training is probably a really bad idea for you. Uh, the, the, you know, a very common example is somebody has CrossFit recommended to them by somebody that they really trust and who has done very well with it. But maybe this other person has, you know, they sit a lot at work and they frequently have low back pain and, you know, maybe they have a low back flare up once or twice a year. So if you throw them into a, a higher intensity CrossFit, again, not 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 again, but I want to throw this out there. Not every CrossFit is like this. Um, you should still consider progressively ramping yourself up. But if you just throw yourself into a really high intensity interval training kind of scenario, then it is likely that your, your body will just adopt the position where it can be most effective to accomplish the task. So if the task is to just get a workout done, then you're not going to be thinking about how well you're doing it. You're not going to be thinking about your technique or your form very well. You're not going to be thinking about the, you know, the alignment of your knee with your hip and your foot. You're just going to be thinking about accomplishing this goal. And so when I get really fatigued, I'm generally going to avoid if even if you start by doing things really well, those muscles will get fatigued and your body will shift its mechanism for doing this exercise. Um, common example, even if you're squatting and your knees are really well aligned with your, your feet and your hip, you're not sending torque through your knee. You know, if you do a 20 rep set, of your 20 rep maximum weight, by the end of that, your knees are gonna start caving in. You're gonna start collapsing because the, the muscles that support those knees staying in line with the hip, um, they start to get tired, okay? That's a really simple example. Uh, another one, really, really common, deadlifting. When you get you know toward rep eight of a 10 rep set, of deadlifts, it's really difficult to maintain the right position. It's hard to keep the tension on your glutes when you lock the bar out. And so instead what people do is they shut those glutes off and they just arch their back to finish the lift, right? And so doing that, putting undue stress on the low back, is gonna make it more sensitive and it's gonna make it more likely that something bad happens to it. So if you are really prone to these things, maybe you don't have a, a very strong athletic background, maybe you didn't play a whole lot out in the yard or play sports when you were a younger kid, then I would, I would caution you to go into a high intensity interval training with, you know, with uh, not your blinders on, right? You, you need to be able to say, hey, maybe this exercise right now or this environment right now is not right for me. Maybe I need to get fit and then this will be a little bit better of a situation for me. Or if you're just really good at not succumbing to the peer pressure that is group exercise, um, I know I am not that person, but maybe you can say, hey, I, I understand that right now this is fun and I can tell that my technique is changing, so I should start to slow down a little bit. I should take it a little bit easier. Even though I know that physically my body could complete this, maybe that's not right for me right now. 